Woody was also opposed to the 2009 war in Gaza. The way this is being reported around the world, and may I suggest even America, it's not entirely telling the Americans the truth. Would you go that far? Because there's, now we're, we're wondering why people of certain stature aren't coming out and speaking against what's happening there. Well, that's a tough one. You know, people don't really want to talk about that because it, if you say anything against uh, Israel or Israeli policy, you really become a pariah. I went recently to Israel. I went into the Palestinian territory, spent a lot of time with, uh, you know, Israeli folks, people in the military, you know, who were some of my friends who I came over to visit. And one thing that the Israeli folks did agree to that the settlers and the settlements, you know, these guys are out of control and what they're doing there, you know, they just, it's a land grab. Is there any hesitation with you at all, and not that you display it, as a Hollywood star talking about that? Yeah, I haven't really talked about it openly at all. I think that what's happening on both sides is terrible, you know, it's, there's, there's, uh, you know, suicide bombers go into Israel, blow themselves up. It's a terrible thing, you know. But, you, you know, to me, there's a difference between a suicide bomber going into Israel and blowing himself up and killing 20 people and, you know, an F-17 dropping bombs from the sky, you know. And it's, and it's really just a level of you know, how many people are dying. I can see our PR lady is even a bit nervous that we're talking about this. <laughs> you got to be nervous so about going, this. What is she yeah. talking about? I'm already going to be in big trouble for this. <laughs> the King's Torah, a settler rabbi, publishes the complete guide to killing Gentiles who threaten Israel, including children and babies. Are such calls harmless, or do they drive official policy and manipulate the masses? Uh, uh, actions that, that, that killed and injured women and children and men uh, I, uh, in their homes. Uh, political people may say whatever they want. The problem is not political but religious. Yeah. With a minute, the people religious are becoming religiously fanatic. Reason is becoming irrelevant. They do it for religious purpose, fanatic. But former Israeli General Nehemiah Dagan, who for many years was in charge of army education, says mixing religion with military can be a dangerous mix. A common theme in religious Zionism, where serving in the army is a form of religious duty. Uh, it says in the Torah that we have to go to the army. By publishing a new book in which he appears to authorize the killing of non-Jews who are accused of posing a threat to Israel. The book, called The King's Torah, contains quotations from the Talmud, a scholarly Jewish text, to which the rabbi adds his own opinions and interpretations. In a chapter entitled The Killing of Gentiles in Wartime, the rabbi writes, In any circumstances where the presence of a Gentile causes danger to Israel, it is permitted to kill the Gentile. In addition, he says, in cases where there is a strong suspicion that someone will continue persecuting Jews, it is permissible to kill him, even if at this moment he is not actively persecuting. Months after Israel's offensive in Gaza and the controversy continues, especially over the new role played by the army's rabbis, as seen here in a leaflet obtained by Breaking the Silence, distributed to combat soldiers in Gaza, which carry the logo of the military rabbinate. I will chase down my enemy and I will not return until he's destroyed and so on. Mm -hmm. that's, that's as religious biblical reference as you get. We don't care what the world thinks about what our land is or what our land is not. You don't we, care what the world thinks? No, no. Why? Because we are, we are a chosen nation and the world knows that. And, and God promised us Jerusalem. Jewish historian Tony Jutt wrote in 2006 on Israel's 58th birthday that the country was curiously immature and quote, consumed by a brutal confidence in its own uniqueness, certain that no one understands it and everyone is against it, and full of wounded self-esteem, quick to take offence and quick to give it." End quote. Less than two hours after the families are evicted, the Israeli police help more than 20 Jewish settlers move into the now empty properties. And in this war, the 
Palestinians in Gaza have nothing. And Israel uh, is one of the strongest uh, states in the world. For example, instead of having a guard sitting on the wall with Gaza, uh, that will shoot at any Palestinians that comes near to the wall. They have a special um, something weird there that looks like, I don't know, coming from outer space. It's like a sphere. And there are a lot of surveillance cameras inside. And then there are women who sit in a base, an army base, inside Israel, far from there, who control these cameras. And when they see something moving, uh, they can shoot it from afar. So they have a room full of people who just control this entire section of the wall with Gaza. The system is called Ro'ayowa, which means seeing, shooting in the feminine, because it's all women. And uh, it's, it's quite uh, obscene if you think about it. But could, would you, could you tell me this then? To us as outsiders, the David and Goliath situation that exists between you and the, and the Palestinians, particularly in Gaza, they don't, have, they don't appear to have an economy. They don't appear to have a society. They don't even appear to have a way of life. And now, in the last couple of months, 80, 90 percent of their, their homes are destroyed. They have no source of income. This, this is, I guess, why the world was shocked at the ferocity of, of your attack on Gaza.